I'm making a teapot today. Some of my students wanted to make teapots, so I want to have a video made so they can look at that before we do it in class. So I'm centering the clay. This is just under three pounds, and this will be the, the vessel of the teapot. I've got it centered, so now I'm going to make the well in the middle, going down in. Be really great if you could come in and see this. And open it up a little bit. Sponge the bottom completely so that it doesn't crack in the drying process. Compressing the bottom helps to lock the clay particles together nice and tightly so they don't separate and shrink away from each other. Now I'm going to slow the wheel down a little bit so I can start making my pulls. Making the pulls means to bring the wall of clay up taller. I'm going to work hard to keep my collar, the neck of the pot, nice and narrow so that it doesn't widen up too much. Once it's too wide, I can't bring it back in. So I'm gonna make it a nice volcano shape and leave the lip nice and thick so I can put a little flange in there. Anyway, I'm still pulling up the wall to make it a lot taller. I find making a pull is always best to do on the exhale so it keeps me nice and steady. So I take a deep breath before I start, and then on the exhale, bring the clay up nice and tall. Pause a little bit if I need to take a breath, and continue again. Got a little wider there, so I'm gonna bring it back in. You don't wanna have to count on doing that too often, because the more often you bring it in like that and collar it in, the more likely it is to twist the pot. So now I'm going down inside again. I'm going to add a curve. You can see the shape change, and I'm changing it from the inside, pushing out a curve. I love a little pot belly on the teapot. redundancy and just bring it up and bring it up, bring it up, bring it up, bring it back in. And... All right. I left a lot down at the bottom. I don't normally like to do that, but I can cut that away. I gave myself more clay than I usually do, so now I'm getting rid of that. Slide underneath it. Loosen the ring I just cut loose. And get rid of all of that. And that gives it a much more appealing shape. And we do some more cleanup. Whenever I'm working on the outside, I'm still supporting the inside. Oh, it looks pretty good on the inside already. I thought I'd have to clean up in there. I do want to round this a tiny bit more. Now I'm getting a little picky, but it is important to me to have a nice, complete orb, a nice sphere. Okay, so now I'm going to bring this back in again. I'm done going down in there. So I brought the collar in. I like to accent it with a accent it with a line to define that collar. I love a clean line, just a couple of clean lines with nice round shapes. Again, keeping it appealing that way. All right, so now this is the tricky part. I'm going to cut the flange. The flange is a little lip that I create for the lid to sit. So I just cut with a wooden tool so carefully. This is the part that makes most potters nervous because it's kind of tricky. You have to be careful. You're cutting wet clay in half 
creating a little shelf for the lid to sit securely. There we go. All right. Just a little bit of water on the lip that I don't like to leave because that could cause a crack or a sharp spot. There we go. I'm always supporting myself. Seems like weird positioning, but to have your hands connected at all times keeps you much steadier. Okay, so I'm liking the way this looks. So now I'm going to measure with a caliper because that tells me how wide the lid will be. So grab a bat and a new lump of clay. And from this little lump of clay, I'm going to make the lid and the spout. So I center this. Again, with the exhale, I love to use the exhale. I'll take a deep breath and then smooth in while exhaling. And that helps me to center. Now I'm going to collar in because I don't want all of this for the lid. Part of it is going to be for the lid. Part of it will be the spout coloring it in to define where the lid ends and the spout begins. And I'm going to pull out the diameter of the lid. Just stretching this into a very shallow dish, which when inverted becomes the lid of the teapot. And so I have to be careful not to go too far. So I'm going to measure. Oh, go figure. All right. Well, that works. So that was the right measurement. I didn't plan that. It just happened to be. So now I'm going to sponge it. And to find the top of the lid, which looks like the bottom right now. And I'll slice that off. I just want to clean my hands up a tiny bit. Slice that off and put it off to the side so I can make a little spout. So I'll put it over there, and now I'm gonna make the spout. So it was mostly centered already, but I'm gonna double check it. It's harder to center a tiny bit of clay. Usually you're wrapping your hands around, but it's so small that I'm only using a little bit of my palm and my fingertips of my right hand. And that is centered. So now I'm making the little well. I get to go all the way through to the bottom because you don't need a bottom on the spout. And sometimes I don't know, depends upon the mood I'm in, like what shape do I want the spout? Do I want it long and sleek? Do I want it kind of rounded? The pot, the teapot is pretty rounded. So I like the idea of having the base broad and the top more narrow. And again, sponging it off. All the lips, the openings of each piece you make should always be sponged nice and clean. Off to the side for later too. All right. So now I'll show you the teapot that I made the other day and we'll assemble it with spout and lid and handle. There we go. So here's a teapot that I've already made. And I'm going to put on the little spout. And when you put the spout on, you have to put the little holes in so that it strains the leaves, keeps the leaves inside, but allows the tea to pour out. So what I'm doing is I'm punching five holes in and then the clay is a little sticky, so it stays there, but because I punched them through, they'll pop off when the pot is completely dry. There we go. 
And here's a spout that I've already made. So I'll scratch them with that on. Honey, I forgot to get myself a scoring tool. Can you get me one, please? Thank you. I'm gonna score and slip as thoroughly as possible so that it's a really nice attachment um, in, on the third table over there by the scissors. This is an industrial strength wire brush. There we go. Sure, it's a nice attachment. You can see the slip oozing out under the seam. That means that I've made a good vacuum attachment. And when it shrinks, it's going to shrink even tighter. And then I'll just take not much water, but just a tiny dip of water on my finger to smooth this in. There we go. Honey, in that same pot, you're going to find paint brushes. Will you grab one of those? Thank you. Okay. Awesome. Okay. So then, I'm going to work on the lid real quick. I just wanted to trim the lid a little bit. And this is a lid I made the other day, so it's um, leather hard. And I've already centered it onto the bat with some soft key or keys, clay keys is what they are. And I'm just going to cut some of the uneven clay off with this little trimming tool. can't find one in there you can grab one from the top of the gray shelving where I keep all the clay cutting tools they're laying on top kind of hidden there okay and now I made this little coil handle so simple a white one any white stiff one so I'll scratch it with this little handle on off. So, and then I've pulled a handle already. So I was using, using water to pull this nice and slick and clean. And now I'm going to put the handle on. I always make sure that it's all lined up with the spout. Or at least I'd like to think I'm always sure I line it up with the spout. There have been times where I end up having to redo it because I was standing at an angle. And again, I'm pushing till I see that slip come out. And then line up the handle at the base and look at it. Make sure it's aesthetically pleasing. And it looks like the hand is going to fit in there nicely. And I'll scratch it with that on. I try not to touch it any more than absolutely necessary. The more you touch it, the more fingerprints you leave, the more frustrating it is for cleaning up in the end. 
So if you can, t if you've noticed, I haven't touched any of that freshly pulled handle at all. And there's our teapot. Thanks for watching. <laughs>